Hello children and welcome back to the class. Today also we are going to continue with our chapter on understanding the quadrilaterals. Look at the two sets of figures. Is there a difference between the two sets? Yes, you are right. All the quadrilaterals in set 1 have one pair of opposite sides which are parallel and the other pair of opposite sides are not parallel. Whereas in set 2 this condition does not hold good. A quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel is called a trapezium. Hence all the quadrilaterals in set 1 are trapeziums. But all the figures in set 2 are not trapeziums. A quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel is called a trapezium. Children, now I will take you through another variety of quadrilaterals. So come let us go and discover them. So children, now let us construct that special variety of quadrilateral which I was talking about for which I take a circle with centre through point and draw a circle. Next with the same tool I draw another circle such that it intersects the previous circle. Now you can see there are two points of intersect between these circles. So I mark this using the intersect tool and I get the two points. Now let me remove all these circles which I do not require now. And I remove these extra points again which is not required for our construction. Now let me join these four points using line segments. Now before that let me label these points. Point A. This will be point C. This one will be E. And this will be F. Now let me join all these four points using the segment tool. So first A E. Then E C. C F and F A. Now this quadrilateral that I have just constructed resembles one of the quadrilateral that you have very frequently seen. Can you guess? Yes, you are right. This is resembling a kite. Now let us try to understand the attributes of this kite. So for which I go and measure the sides. So let me measure side A E first which is 9.25 AF 9.25. So the adjacent sides AE and AF are equal because they have a common vertex A. Now let me measure EC and CF. What do you see? Again EC is equal to CF. So EC is adjacent to CF and they are equal because they have a common vertex which is C. So what can you generalize from here? A kite has exactly two distinct consecutive pairs of sides which are of equal length. So children, now let us define a kite. A quadrilateral with exactly two distinct consecutive pairs of equal sides is called a kite. Children, let us observe these two given set of quadrilaterals and find which amongst them is a set of kites. Set 1 is a collection of kites whereas set 2 is not a collection of kites as they do not have one pair of adjacent sides which are equal. So children now let us look at this video and try to explore the properties of a kite. Here is a kite A E C F. Now how can we say this is a kite? Yes, because two of its adjacent sides are equal, this quadrilateral is given the special name the kite. Now we shall go and try to explore the various properties of the kite for which I have drawn the two diagonals that is AC and EF. AC is the line segment connecting the two non consecutive vertices A and C, EF connects the vertices E and F and they intersect at this point G. Now let us try to measure the segments AG and GC. 
and find out what are their measurements. So, I measure A G which is equal to 11.2 then I measure G C which is 6.9 that means A C is not bisected by E F they are of different lengths. Now, let us measure E G that is 3.16 G F again 3.16 so E F is bisected by A C that means G is the midpoint of E F. So, in a kite only one diagonal bisects the other. Both of them are not bisected only one is getting bisected. So, here A C has bisected E F. Now, the next property is with respect to the angles. So, let us go and measure the angles of this kite. So, the first angle that we are going to measure is E C F. So, let me select the angle tool. I measure angle E C F. Now, what is that equal to? That is 49.25. The next angle that I am going to measure is the let me select the angle tool F A E. So, that angle comes out to be 31.57. So, here angle A is not equal to angle C. Now, let us go and measure the remaining two angles. So, let me take the angle tool again. Now, I am going to measure angle A E C. Now, that angle comes out to be a 139.59. Now, let me measure the last angle which is going to be C F A. Now, what is that angle equal to? that is also exactly equal to 139.59. So, here E and F have become equal. Now, the next thing that we are going to check is how do these diagonals intersect each other. So, let us find the angles between these two diagonals when they intersect at G. So, let me go and take the angle tool again. Now, I am going to measure the angle C G E. The C G E. Now, that comes out to be 90 degrees. So, let me go and measure the other one that is A G F. A G F. What did you observe? That that also happens to be a 90 degrees. So, I can say that the diagonals are perpendicular to one another. So, we have seen three properties. The one pair of opposite angles are equal. One diagonal bisects the other and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So, these are the properties that we could verify using this kite that we have drawn on the GeoGebra applet. So, children, you have gone through the video now. So, you should be in a position to list the properties of a kite one after another. The first property of kite, the diagonals are perpendicular to one another. The second property, one of the diagonals bisects the other. The third property, one pair of opposite angles are equal. The next variety of quadrilaterals that we are going to see is the parallelograms. As the name itself suggests, it has something to do with parallel lines. So, let us go and see how to construct a parallelogram and also verify its properties. Let us see how a parallelogram can be constructed. As the name suggests parallelogram that means this quadrilateral has got something to do with the parallel lines. So, we will draw a line first. And then we will draw another line parallel to this line through a point. So, let me mark the point first and now I am going to draw another line 
parallel to this line passing through the point. So I have got one set of parallel lines now. Now I am going to draw another set of parallel lines intersecting these parallel lines. So how am I going to do that? I am going to make use of these three points that I already have. So first I will draw a line passing through these through points. Ah, the next step will be to draw a line parallel to this line passing through this point. So we shall select this line and allow it to pass through this point. Now we have two sets of parallel lines intersecting each other and because of this intersection there is a polygon formed here. It is definitely a quadrilateral because it has got four sides. Now in this quadrilateral since the opposite sides are parallel it is termed a parallelogram. So let me mark the point of intersect here between these two lines so that I get all the four vertices of this parallelogram. And now let me go and try to name all these points A, B, D and then this is going to be C. So now I am going to draw a polygon passing through all these four points A, B, C and D. Now before I do that let me remove all these extra lines that I have drawn so that I have only the polygon with me. So I have removed all the lines. Now I will select the polygon tool and draw a polygon passing through these four points A, B, D and C. So my polygon is ready or in more specific terms it is a quadrilateral where the opposite sides are parallel and hence this quadrilateral A, B, D, C is a parallelogram. A quadrilateral with two pairs of opposite sides parallel is called a parallelogram. Now let us try to understand the properties of a parallelogram. So here is a parallelogram A, B, C, D. We know that a quadrilateral ABCD is called a parallelogram when its opposite sides are parallel. So because ABCD is given to be a parallelogram, we have the opposite sides that is AB parallel to CD and BC parallel to AD. So this is given to us. Now using this, we are trying to understand three more properties of a parallelogram. Now because it is said uh, AB is parallel to CD, we have drawn both the diagonals here AC and BD. Now with respect to the diagonal AC, the parallelogram is divided into two triangles. One is triangle ABC and the second one is triangle CDA. Now look at these two triangles. In these two triangles, angle 1 will be equal to angle 2 because CD is parallel to AB and if AC becomes the transversal, angle 2 and angle 1 will become the alternate interior angles and hence they are equal. Similarly, your angle 3 will become equal to angle 4. Here you have to consider AD is parallel to BC and now when AC becomes the transversal, your angle 4 and angle 3 will again become the alternate interior angles and hence they become equal. Now coming back to the triangles A, B, C and C, D, A. What have we already seen? Angle 1 has become equal to angle 2 and also angle 3 has become equal to angle 4. Now AC is a common side for both these triangles. So am I able to see the congruence between the two triangles now? So by using the ASA congruence rule, we can tell that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Alright, so the two triangles have become congruent by the ASA rule. So what can you tell about the sides now? 
Now look at the sides of the triangle. They are CD is corresponding to AB. So you can definitely go back and say that CD will become equal to AB. So by CP, CT that is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are always equal. And hence I can say AB has become equal to CD. Similarly, we can also say BC has become equal to AD. Why? Because again, these are the two congruent parts of two congruent triangles that we have already shown. So now by this proof, I should be able to tell that the opposite sides of a parallelogram have become equal. Now by using the same congruence of the two triangles ABC and CDA, I can also show that the opposite angles of a parallelogram will become equal. Now we have already proved that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by the ASA congruence rule. Now if the two triangles are congruent, then angle D which is in the second triangle will become equal to angle B which is in the first triangle using the CPCT that is the congruent part of two congruent triangles will always be congruent. So I can say D will become equal to B. Similarly, I can also show angle C will become equal to angle A. How do I show that? I can either draw the second diagonal and show that triangle DAB will be congruent to triangle BCD by the same ASA congruence. Hence, then you can go back and say angle C will become equal to angle D. Then we can now go back and say that the opposite angles of a parallelogram will become equal. Now, let us go and measure the two diagonals of this parallelogram. So, we will take the measure tool where we will find the distance AC. So, AC is coming out to be 15.16. Now, let us also measure BD. That is coming out to be 11.43. So, the diagonals in a given parallelogram will not be equal. Can we say that the two diagonals will bisect each other? So, let us go and measure the segments to find out whether the two diagonals bisect each other. So, for that, let us move this a little away so that we are able to see the segments also. So, now I am going to measure A, C. You are getting it to be 7.58. Next O, C. Can you see it is 7.5A. That means O is the midpoint of AC. Or AC is bisected by the segment BD which is the second diagonal. Now let us go and measure D, O. That is showing 5.72. What about O, B? Again it is 5.72. So we can go and say that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So from the video, you are able to verify all the properties of a parallelogram. So now let's list them one after another. The opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. The opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Now we are going to discuss some special varieties of parallelograms. The first one in this list is a rhombus. Now let's watch this video to construct a rhombus and also verify its properties. A parallelogram with sides of equal length is called a rhombus. Now we are going to see a special variety of parallelogram which we are going to call the rhombus. So because a rhombus is a special variety of a parallelogram that is it branches out of a parallelogram it will have all the properties of a parallelogram and apart from that it may have a few extra properties. So here I have a parallelogram with all its angles and the sides along with the diagonals marked. So let us see how this 
parallelogram can undergo a few changes and hence it can become a rhombus. Now in a rhombus all the sides have to be equal. So I have to convert this parallelogram into a rhombus means I have to make all the sides equal. Now see how I am going to do that. I am just trying to turn the parallelogram all around keeping in mind that I have to have all the sides becoming equal. Now we have seen that the sides of this parallelogram have become equal and hence it has taken a new shape now. So this parallelogram is called a rhombus. Now what are the other properties that have been added on to this parallelogram that it has been become a rhombus. So we look at the opposite angles now. Still the opposite angles are equal so it is the same as the property of a parallelogram. Uh, the diagonals are also bisecting each other you can see that the segments are 9, CE 9.5 and EB 9.5 AE is 5.72 and ED is 5.72 this is your E. So the diagonals are bisecting each other just like in a parallelogram but there is something else which is visible now that is the diagonals are perpendicular to each other which is not true in the case of a parallelogram all right so the extra property which it has gained is all the four sides have become equal and the diagonals have become perpendicular to each other so we can call that a rhombus is a parallelogram whose sides are equal and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other so this is how a parallelogram is transformed into a rhombus or we can say a rhombus is a special variety of the parallelogram. So from the video let us first try to define a rhombus. A rhombus is a special variety of parallelogram where all its sides are equal and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Now we shall go and list the properties of a rhombus. All sides are equal and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. The second variety of parallelograms that we are going to discuss is a rectangle. So now let's watch this video to see how a rectangle is constructed and also verify its properties. A parallelogram with all its angles as right angles is called a rectangle. Now we let us see how this parallelogram is getting transformed into a rectangle. So the first step that I am going to do is to change all these angles in the parallelogram that I have taken as 90 degrees. So we will see how we can change this to 90 degrees and once all the four angles become right angles, what other changes have happened in the parallelogram we have to observe. So I will start changing the angles as right angles, I will be approaching them slowly so that it all becomes equal to 90 degrees. Now you have seen all the angles have become 90 degrees. So a parallelogram whose all angles are right angles is going to become a rectangle. Now what happened to the diagonals? See all the segments of the diagonals have become equal. That means what? Both our diagonals are going to be of equal length. So let us measure them. Let us first measure AD. It comes out to be 21.19. Next we will measure BC. So you can see BC is also 21.19 and AD is also 21.19. So when the parallelogram becomes a rectangle, its diagonals will become of equal length. So this is the next property that the rectangle has got which is slightly different from that of a parallelogram. In a parallelogram the diagonals are not equal but in a rectangle the diagonals have become equal. So I can say a rectangle is a parallelogram where all its angles have become 90 degrees and the diagonals are equal. So from the video, what did you understand children? Yes, a rectangle is a parallelogram all whose angles are right angles. So now let's go and list the properties of a rectangle. Properties of a rectangle. 
each angle is a 90 degrees and the diagonals are equal. The next variety of parallelograms that we shall be discussing will be a square. So, net, now let us go and watch this video to find how we can construct a square and also verify its properties. A parallelogram with all angles as right angles and sides of equal length is called a square. Now, how a parallelogram is transformed in a, as a square is what we are going to see now. So, here again I need to change the angles of the parallelogram to 90 degrees and also I have to see that all the sides become equal. So, let me do all these changes in the parallelogram so that I get all the angles and all the sides are also becoming equal. So, let us see how we can do that. So, now we can see that all the angles of this parallelogram has transformed as 90 degrees and all the sides have also become equal. Now, what are the other changes which have happened in this parallelogram? Now, look at the diagonals. They are intersecting at 90 degrees each. That means, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. And what can you tell about the diagonals? You can see the diagonal BC is 9.9 .9 and AD is also 9.9. .9. So, the diagonals have also become equal and they bisect each other also. So, I can say a square is a parallelogram all of whose angles are equal to 90 degrees. The diagonals are equal and they bisect each other at 90 degrees. So, these are the properties of a square which is something extra compared to that of a parallelogram. So, because square has got all the properties of all the parallelograms that is the rectangle, the rhombus and the parallelogram itself, it is a very special variety of parallelogram. So, what did you understand from the video children? A square is a rectangle when all its sides become equal. Also, a square is a special variety of parallelogram because it has got all the properties of a parallelogram, a rhombus and a rectangle. So, now let us list the properties of a square. Each angle is a right angle, the diagonals are equal and the diagonals bisect each other at right angles. So, students, we have discussed the properties of all the varieties of quadrilaterals today. So, based on all that we have learnt in this chapter, I have a few questions which you should be able to do on your own. So, here are the questions. You can try them on your own. So, children, I hope you enjoyed the class today. So, before we close, let us try to recall the concepts that we have learnt today. We have learnt about the various kinds of quadrilaterals and the properties of these quadrilaterals which included the parallelogram, the rhombus, the rectangle and the square. So, children, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you and have a good day.